Good morning and welcome to top 10 dementia friendly online activities. We're very grateful that you've come today because there's a lot of elders in our country right now who are at home, not able to go anywhere. They might be with family members, they might be alone, or they may be living in a retirement community, but they're not able to get out and do the things they used to do. And so many of us are asking questions like, how do we help grandpa? How do we help him stay active? How do we help him have a good time even during this season when it's really not the best thing for him to be out and about? Uh, but, but this is also a topic that many families deal with every day. And it's just all of a sudden that the nation's paying attention to it. Some of you here today may experience this question all the time. And our COVID-19 scenario is just having the nation pay attention because a lot of people have passed by and not really realized what a big deal it is to try to every day figure out how to help someone we love, especially someone with dementia, stay engaged. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review some of my favorite things to do online that are very appropriate for any age, but especially unique for people with dementia. My name is Benjamin Sermi. I am a social gerontologist and director of people and culture for Kelsch Communities. Uh, my passion ever since I was probably 12 years old has been listening to the stories of elders and finding ways to help elders of every ability stay connected in their world. We will be together for just about 25 minutes. So it's going to be a quick preview of some of the things that are great tools. But I want to draw your attention to something. Um, at the end of this little online event, you will have the opportunity to, to take a quick survey, to fill out a quick form. Uh, there's two purposes for that form. Number one, everything I'm talking about will be in a tool. That tool will have hyperlinks to everything I'm talking about. That way you do not need to take notes. So this tool will be sent to you. If you'll just fill out the form with your email address, it will get sent to you within about the next 24 hours. The second thing that will happen is you'll be entered into a drawing for two things. The caregiver's care package designed by a family, licensed family therapist, that will be the drawing along with a very unique caregiver journal. This journal was designed by this family therapist who had counseled lots of families and then finally herself had to care for her own mother and realized what family caregivers go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So she created the caregiver package as well as the caregiver journal. And so we'll be doing a raffle at the end of this month for folks who come to our online events and we'll be giving these two things away. You, can, you, you should have a pop-up that will come up after this webinar uh, that will automatically direct you to the form. But if you do not, I will show this link again at the very end of the webinar. If you go to that link, you can fill it out, be entered into the drawing and request that you receive the tool with all the hyperlinks and the notes from today. So with that, let's begin. So we're gonna look through 10 different ways to engage someone with dementia using resources available online. I'm gonna start with number 10 and work down to number one. So number 10 is engage the senses. As many of you know, as we grow in dementia, as we progress in dementia, we begin to rely on our senses in a unique way. Take for instance, someone who may be sight impaired. They start to rely on other senses like hearing, like taste, like smell to navigate their world. The same thing goes with dementia. When you do not have dementia, you can rely on your brain to do a lot for you. You can rely on words, you can rely on ideas, but as dementia progresses, you start to rely on your other senses. And so engaging multiple senses is one of the most effective ways we can work with someone with dementia. In the tool I'm gonna to send you, there's an amazing PDF that has about 61 different apps and it rates them by their cost, a description of the app, and which 
stage of dementia works well with this particular app. And a lot of them are sensory apps, apps that are designed to do nothing more than excite the senses. And I want to show you three. The three apps are Drop a Phone and Fluid and a Goldfish app. Very simple apps, they're not games. They simply excite the senses. For instance, Drop a Phone. You see all the little droplets on that phone screen? Well, as you touch them in different ways, they begin to create different tunes. And the more you touch them, the more they start replaying these tunes for you. Fluid, Fluid responds to touch by creating interactive fluid patterns on the screen. And goldfish, you can just watch it or you can start to play with the goldfish. Um, you can also use the internet using Pinterest and Google and other things to get inspired on how to create physical hands-on sensory experiences. So this is not an idea in which you stay on your screen, but where you use the screen to inspire you to put together kits of things that you can throw onto a table, you can put on someone's lap, and they can just start rummaging through them. This is so effective. We practice that in our memory care communities very frequently. And over and over again, it is reported to me that it is one of the most effective things to do with seniors with dementia, especially those with agitation. Just sitting there with a box that is relevant to their life somehow. If someone liked sports, it's related to sports. If someone liked cooking, it's related to cooking. Someone liked travel, fashion, it's related to those things. And it's very easy to put these kits together. You can print pictures off the internet. You can go to the library or old bookstore and find maps and books and things and magazines. You can go to the garage and put some things in it. And you can use the internet to get inspired. The kit I'll send you or the tool I'll send you has different keywords you can search for to get inspiration for creating your own kit. Now, number nine is volunteer. You know, it's funny how we, we forget sometimes that just because we are older or we may have dementia, that doesn't mean that it's now just time for us to be served. We have served our entire life. Right now, the greatest generation is in their 80s and their 90s. They built America. They know what it is to serve. And to, to, to take that away or to not open the door for them to keep serving and keep being active and, and sharing their gifts, it just is, is a big disservice. And so one of the coolest things with the internet is we can now volunteer from home or find volunteer opportunities that we can do from home. So I'm gonna just give you a few examples. There's 25 examples in the tool that I'll send you, but uh, three, of, three or four of them are these. So number one is seven cups. Seven Cups is a service that people can, can just can get a volunteer to listen to them. There's a lot of lonely people in the world. With Seven Cups, there's someone to talk to. And an elder can easily be that person to talk to, that person to listen when someone else is lonely and needs someone to talk to. Chemo Angels provides an opportunity to reach out to people with going through chemotherapy and send them gifts or send them cards, send them letters to encourage them as they go through that. eBird is a unique program that allows you to sit in your backyard or go to the park, sit out in your front porch, watch for birds, and then report back to scientists which birds you saw so that scientists can better understand the migration patterns of birds. The Granny Cloud is a unique program in which grandmothers and grandfathers, elders of all shapes, sizes, and sorts, are give just an hour of time, either every week or every month, and they're, they don't have to plan anything, they don't have to create any lessons, they don't have to, but they Skype in to a classroom or to a family room, and they encourage children as children practice different lessons or tell different stories. And the elder is able to be a grandmother to children who may not have a grandmother or who need a grandmother, grandfather in their life. Number eight, experience the opera. You know, a lot of you are probably gonna think that is so silly. My family member never listened to opera in their life. They wouldn't be caught dead in an opera. Well, you know what's interesting is in the United Kingdom, uh, a couple of years, for the past couple of years, some six opera singers have been doing a program called Six Characters in Search of an Opera. 
and they go from retirement home to retirement home and do this. And what they have found is people who never liked opera in their life are deeply engaged. And one of the reasons why is because the kind of singing that opera singers are trained to do is very different than other types of singing. You don't even need to understand their language to understand their emotions. And with dementia, emotions are understood for a very long time in the disease. And so someone with dementia is able to respond in a very visceral and deep way to the singing and emotion of the opera singers. And those who did like opera are of course very happy to have it come right back to them. So the Metropolitan Opera is streaming live and they may not do this forever, but they're doing it right now, at least for the next two, three weeks. And if, if you can't find it here, you can certainly go on YouTube and, and find opera there. But the Metropolitan Opera is streaming full quality HD opera series right now. You can see all kinds of opera from the comfort of your living room and just experiment and see if, if maybe grandma or dad or husband or, or brother enjoy it. Maybe they only enjoy it for 15 minutes, but it's something that may stir them in a way that other things don't. Number seven, watch and discuss. Now, Honestly, TV is, is way overused. TV is way overused with people living with dementia. I have been a caseworker in homes, and let me tell you, Judge Judy is watched by more people with dementia over this planet than probably any other show. And, you know, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not knocking it. But I'm not going to talk about just using TV in the typical way. Instead, what I want to talk about is, is using TV in a way that's more appropriate for dementia. So there's a program that started in New Jersey, and it's called Meet Me at the Movies. And the way this program is designed, and it's since spread throughout the United States, and it's, a, it's mostly a format. It's the way you run it, and you can do it right from your own home. What you do is you show six minutes, six to eight minutes, of a clip of a very familiar musical or other type of old classic TV or movie. And then you stop it. You talk about it, you recap it, you tell a little bit more of the story, you remind the people you're with of some of the characters. Then you show another six to eight minute clip and it could be the same thing or you could move on to a totally different film or movie. This is very effective with people living with dementia because the tension spans and the ability to follow a full story are not intact anymore. So a typical TV program just really doesn't work for someone with dementia most of the time. Here's an example format for doing this at home. Number one, you watch a few clips of Annie and the sun will come out tomorrow and she's singing that famous song. You stop it and you discuss Daddy Warbucks and would you like to live with Daddy Warbucks and what would it be like to be that rich and what are ways you used to fight for hope. Then you show another movie and you have a discussion. Then you show another movie and you have a little discussion. And again, you're just showing short clips and then talking about it. Play games. This is a, this is a, a, a no-brainer, um, but which games to play? What games might work well using the internet? So what I really enjoy doing is I love games that involve visual, musical, and words. I, I want all three, all right? That, that's what I prefer when I'm working with people dementia as a gerontologist. I want to incorporate all three. So for instance, I might pull up on YouTube I might pull up um, or, uh, or on Google Images, different images of musicals. I might pull up on Spotify or YouTube um, clips from each of these musicals. I may play one minute of Peter Pan and Mary Robbins um, singing, singing, singing one of her famous songs, right? And then talking about Peter Pan and the story of Peter Pan. And then I move on to West Side Story and I play Maria and I play just, just enough for them to get the flavor of it. And then maybe I play the Coming to America song because that's very familiar and they can sing along with it. And we just talk about it. I don't, I don't test them. I don't say, oh, what movie did this person play in? What movie was this song from? No, I, I don't necessarily straight out tell them right away. I, I start giving clues and then I tell them, yes, this was Annie that I'm talking about. And this was what it was about. And this was the songs. And, and then we sing along to any familiar song. So Mary Poppins will probably sing along to supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, right? Because everybody knows the song, at least parts of it. Or I might pull up animals and I might pull up sounds for each animal and facts for each animal. And I can do this all from my smartphone, right? And the visual, the sound, 
the facts all come together to, to bring back memories and to stir curiosity. So you can use sound, you can use theme songs, you can use jingles or old commercials, you can use singers like Frank Sinatra, Dolly Parton, Johnny Cash, the singers in their life. You can think of places like the Eiffel Tower and Yosemite. You can think of things, you can do, do kind of close-ups of objects and try to think about what that object might be. Number five, ask beautiful questions. Asking thoughtful questions is important, especially when we've lived with someone our whole life. And we feel like there's, we, we know everything there is to know about them. And we've gotten into the habit of just talking about today. We talk about what the grandkids are doing. We talk about what's going on. Do we have enough food in the house? And what's going on in the backyard? And who so-and-so you know, did this and so-and-so -so did that. And it, it's easy to get into a rut or to get really to the point where we just don't have much to talk about, where we just watch TV together because we just don't have much to talk about. And it can happen whether we're spouses, it can happen whether it's me and my mom and my dad. I'm like, what do you want to talk to them about? You know, I, I know everything there is to know about them. And that's not true, but it's just easy to get into that rut. I it can get into that rut with my own sweetheart who's 39 years old and I'm 40, right? Easy, I mean, we haven't lived together that long, right? We haven't been married that long, only you know, 13, 14 years, but it still feels like we know everything about each other. So ask beautiful questions instead. Time Slips has a great resource. It's a, it's a national organization, nonprofit, that comes up with creative ways to connect with people, especially those with dementia. And one of the ways is to ask questions that really make you think, make you respond expressively and creatively to one another. So that's a great resource to get some ideas of questions to ask. Number four, talk with old friends. This is a great time to do it during the coronavirus where everybody is staying at home, but it's something we can do at any time. There is no reason not to connect with people, even in other countries that we haven't seen in years. We're doing that right now as a family. We have connected with more people in the past two weeks than we have in the last year. More people that we, that we just um, video call, Skype, WhatsApp chat, people in Germany, people in Nashville, people I haven't seen in years. And we're connecting. Maybe it's 10 minutes, but we're connecting again. Hey, are you busy? We'd love to talk. I haven't seen you in forever. Now, Skype is probably the best tool because you can use it on any device, Apple, Android, Microsoft, Amazon, all the devices you can use Skype on. It's free. You can have multiple callers at the same time. You can actually have like a party on your phone. You can have like five or six people all talking at the same, or not, you know, their, their, their faces are on the screen at the same time. And it's free. And you can show your screen. So if you want to show a picture to everybody, you could share your screen. Everybody can see the picture of, the, of your new grandbaby, right? So here's a few things for the video chat that you want to remember. Number one, show pictures with screen share. Don't just talk the whole time. I mean, if you can, that's great. If you can just talk and have a great conversation, go for it. But a lot of times people with dementia, they're going to trail off pretty easily. They're not going to, be able to follow the conversation perfectly. So if you're able to do some of these things, it may make the conversation last a little longer, be a little more rich. So number one, show pictures with screen share. Rather than just talking at them, show them things. Show them pictures of what's going on in your life. Show them pictures right off the internet. Go to a web page, show them the web page. Show them your Facebook feed. Number two, tell stories. Think about a couple stories you can tell during that conversation versus just asking questions. Number three, give a tour. Turn it up, turn your camera around, your smartphone, take a walk in the backyard, show them your garden, take a walk in the front yard, show them the neighbors taking, taking sun baths outside right now in their in their front yards. Take them to the garage that you just finished cleaning. Take them, take them on a tour. Number four, ask good questions. Think of some questions ahead of time to ask that might prompt conversation. Number five, interview. You know, don't say I'm gonna interview you, dad, necessarily. I mean, you could say that, but but kind of, think, you know, Dad, I, I want to learn a little bit more about your first job. I got some questions for you, right? That may be awkward at first, but it's one of the best ways to elicit really good conversation with someone you know well, really well because you don't normally ask those questions. Number six, read them something. Read them something familiar. Read a poem, read a short story, read a quick joke. Number seven, pray. If there's someone who likes to pray or has had any history with any kind of religion, Praying is, is a very powerful way to connect. Um, and for many people, praying a, a liturgical prayer that they, that they said when they were a child or said when they were a teenager, those things will be very meaningful to them. Number three, create great stories. We're down to our last four minutes. So we're gonna go through this quickly. Number three, create stories together. Um, Dr. Ann Bastings, uh, the creator of Time Slips, 
um, design a new way to engage elders with dementia. And it's called improvisational storytelling. You can read about it by going to time slips. Basically what it is, is you print out or show a very evocative picture, a picture that you really wanna just look at. And go, what's going on in this picture? Like, what's the story here? And then as a family or as a, as a dyad, you create a story together. You don't try to discern exactly what really is going on. You just create a story about what you think could be going on, what you want to be going on in that picture. And you create a story that then you could share with other people or send to the family. Say, hey, Grandpa and I created this story together about this picture. And it's a very unique way of connecting in an expressive way. Number two, explore the world. We are living in the 21st century and we are so blessed because this, this era, we are able to go places our grandparents never dreamed they could go. We are able to go places in moments that no human has been able to travel all the places we can go now. No human has been able to travel all the places in their lifetime we can do in a Saturday afternoon practically. Um, so virtual tours are very unique ways to do this. Now there's some really poor ones online. One of the ones I like the best is virtual Yosemite tour. It is a great virtual tour. It has about 22 different points of Yosemite. You click on that point and it takes you to a 360 degree view of that waterfall, that bridge, that outcropping. And what's kind of unique is it, it also has sound and you hear the people talking that you see in that picture. You hear the water flowing as you are looking all around that point. So it's a unique sensory experience. Google Image, Google has a whole series of ways to interact with the world called Google Arts and Culture. And I have, again, the links are in the tool I'll send you. And I'm going to just highlight a few of the ways you can interact with the material that they've gathered over the last couple decades. One way is called time travel. And what you do is you select a, an, um, a century. And in that century, it will pull up artifacts that were created during that century. You can click on those artifacts and get more details and more images about that particular artifact. So it's art, it's archeology, span all of it. Collections houses a vast collection from museums, art galleries, historical sites all over the, the world uh, and, and really the universe because there's also things from space. And so you click on the image and it takes you to either a virtual tour of that museum, you can walk through that museum yourself, or it takes you to select pieces from their collection or a storyline that kind of guides you through their collection. 11 incredible views from the top. Go on a virtual tour. Google has created virtual tours of, of these amazing places in the world, places like the Taj Mahal or the Great Pyramid of Giza. You can either walk around it or walk through it. Explore in virtual reality, unique, um, unique places 360 degrees. So the last one was more of a linear, you kind of walking through it. This one is kind of where you're standing in one place and you are looking all around you. You can go into the space station, you can go into a concert hall, stand on the concert hall um, stage and look around as though you were one of the, the instrumentalists, some of the unique 360 degree experiences. And then you have live cams. Live cams are cameras that are watching places all over the world. There are literally thousands of these cameras that you can access on the internet. And you know, you can sometimes wonder like why in the world are people doing that? But there's so many people that love just putting them on and watching them. You don't see it up in the top right corner, but right now there's no puppies there. But that one is just mesmerizing. And I don't even like dogs, I'll be honest with you. But I just sat there watching these puppies play. You can't see them in this picture because they're sleeping. But just watching them play, you can just sit there. And, and you, you, there's a kind of this interest because you know it's live. You know that no one else knows what's going to happen next. You will be one of the first people in the world to see what happens next in this picture. And so it's a great thing to just have on the screen as dad is napping or dad is kind of not sure what to do or dad's folding some laundry or whatever, because it creates a curiosity and an interest. A lot of them are about animals. Number one, this is our last one and then I'll let you go. Cue familiar memories. Now, this is, a, is an important, it's a vitally important tool um, to reminisce with someone with dementia because they still are retaining those old memories. Our job is to simply prompt them so those memories return, so those memories can come alive again, right? So 
it's very important not to ask questions like, do you remember this horse, dad? Do you remember riding that horse? Or dad, do you remember who I am? Or dad, do you remember where we got married or where you got married? Instead, what you ask is questions like, dad, look at this picture. This is where you were married. That's such a beautiful building. That's a much more effective way to reminisce with an elder who has dementia than to ask them point blank questions that require them to recall a name or place. You recall the name or place. What they will recall is their feelings, their emotions, and some stories. So Nestle has put together a whole kit that you can download with pictures and memorabilia from the, 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 the last century that they have been doing business. And it will, it will cause a lot of people who ate those things every day to say, oh, I remember that was on my dining room table. That was there. I do not have a picture with me. Um, I don't have a picture with me right now of this of the next one I want to share with you. But the BBC also has an entire collection of it's it's a dementia friendly archive. If you go to BBC Reminiscent, you can find an entire archive of old pictures, videos, and audio from the last century that can stimulate all kinds of conversation. Now, the one on the screen is called the slideshow.net. It is one of my favorite little websites. All you do is you put in a word like dolphin, animal, um, presidents, whatever, and it will create a slideshow based on Google Images for you and we'll just start playing that slideshow. And then use Google Maps. This is my home. You can go to their home that they grew up in, the home they were born in, the home they lived in, their first home they bought. And then you can take a walk through the park that they used to walk through. You can take a walk through downtown using Google Maps. Um, we have a great, YouTube uh, channel that's designed by a YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, by an art therapist and a special needs educator, Lisa Klitsch. And she designed an amazing YouTube channel that has got all kinds of things. One of the things it has is for each decade, she's collected four to 10 different videos that are more like montages of pictures and, and video from that decade. And just watching that and having discussions about those short little videos brings back all kinds of memories. And then singing, singing along. Singing along is really important. Um, these videos are classic songs set to the words. The words are on the screen. Sitting there together and singing old songs is something that we do seven days a week in our memory care communities because it is really one of the most effective activities you can do with someone with dementia. And thank goodness YouTube has hundreds of these songs with the words on the screen you can use. And again, this link will be in your, in your tool. So my name is Benjamin Sermi. That's my information. Um, you're welcome to reach out to me with questions or anything you wanted to talk about, ideas that you have yourself that have worked well for you. Um, remember, you can enter to win the Caregiver's Care Package and the, the Journal for Family Caregivers simply by going to this address or the address that will pop up on your screen as soon as I close this webinar. You can simply enter that information and we will get you the, everything that I talked about plus bonus items that I added last night that I found that I've been like so excited about and all the hyperlinks. Thank you for being with us today. I appreciate the work you each do as family caregivers or as professionals to engage all abilities, all ages, to include everyone in being able to live an engaged life. Thank you so much and have a great day.